Welcome back to the GD podcast. This is part two with Raj Gill. Raj, I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about um, significant renovations versus new build. Yeah. So you know, from and this might not be uh, a well, you know. Yeah, this this let's talk about a '90s built home, for example. Yeah. So think of um, think of caribou area stucco yeah. homes built in the '90s, where they had large floor plans that would be still desirable today, uh, large structures that would still be desirable today. Um, you can say, let's say you get a four thousand square foot '90s built home with stucco exterior, poly B plumbing, yeah. and the cost of it might be, I don't know. Let's put a price tag on it at two point two million. Right. And the um, the brand new equivalent of that home would be three million. So in in the case of, would you? I mean, you're in the business of building new, so I assume you have the bias of just why would you buy the old? <laughs> <laughs> but is there a scenario when you're thinking of most people and you think of the world of building today where it's you know challenging and expensive? Yes. Um, my thought of bringing a '90s built home up to today's standard involves replacing all the pipes and electric and cosmetically upgrading everything. And you're going to be into that for $500,000 to bring that up potentially. Am I off? Don't know. Not your business. I don't uh, know. What, what, any it's really hard to say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're going to go gut, gut it right down to the studs inside, you probably are probably going to change your windows, probably new cladding. Uh, I've done some of my own I, I mean, you know, I own a heritage building myself. I did that one my first mm, time. Yeah. I found that building cost me 25% more than a new build. Working with the existing. Working with the, yeah. you know, new windows, fully gut the inside, mm. new electrical, new plumbing. Um, obviously, that house is heritage. We kept the outside siding. But obviously, you have to fix it up. Uh, new roof. Uh, we lifted it, put our new foundation, put in drain tiles. Uh, so, you know, and we done that one. We did those other two on Manitoba. I would, I would say it was pretty close to like 20% more than a new And that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I guess the thought is if you were putting yourself in a, a typical buyer's shoes today and they're deciding buying a teardown and building versus buying an existing and working with it, if you bought a 90s built home and put half a million into it, yeah. in your opinion, that versus a new home today, how big is this old home? They say the same size. Say they're four thousand square feet. Yeah, and it, you know, we've talked about the energy efficiency, but yes. we, I mean, the foundation and waterproofing is different. Yeah. Everything is different. Everything's different. So you're, you know, you're still not getting the same quality home, and you're but, probably not getting what you want. End of the day, right? Right. You're stuck with those those bones, right? So what? I mean, ultimately, on the highest level, what are the best reasons to build a home and best reasons to maybe renovate and forego? I mean, new home, you're depending who you hire to build your home, you're going to get a good, efficient home. Uh, you're probably going to get what you want, get your washrooms. Um, I'm going to say it's less expensive than a, a major renovation. Uh, but a renovation, you know, there's people that have budgets that can only afford so much. Uh, some people just love the old houses and they want to maintain them. Um, and I have no issues with that. Uh, but they're, they're hard to work with. and could cost you more. Um, it's always, like I said earlier, there's unexpected costs. You don't know until, yeah. until you start, you know, working on these homes. Right. And you know, I'm, I'm bringing up a scenario that like it, it, oftentimes it's not a buyer choosing one or the other. It's oftentimes a buyer looking at say buying a new home versus building a new home. Yeah. Um, you know, in neighborhoods that have nineties built homes, you don't usually see new homes on them because they're all built at the same time and it's a yeah. little subdivision. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, yeah. you know, we did house, well, four years ago, just down the street from here, um, and they were looking at a major rental, and I think their rental was like close to nine hundred yeah. million dollars. And uh, somehow, I think they actually reached out to Hayek guys, and the Hayek guys, you know, they actually referred me out for a, get a price from Raj. They called Raj for a new build, and we we're actually way under on a new build. And we actually, sorry, we, were, we ended up building a new build there, and we we're actually way cheaper than their full renovation estimate. My, so that kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, not every house is going to be like that, 
uh, that that was a pretty major renovation. It was like doing an addition and uh, you know just gutting it is a big is a big job. One kind of principle, whether it's right or wrong, that I've kind of shared with people over the years is if you're buying an old home yes. with the intent of the, the moment you uh, like say say a buyer's buying an old home, they know the layout doesn't work for them. Yes, but they think, oh, if we do an extension. It, it, we can do an extension off the side or off the back. And, and the conversation I often have is the moment you start doing an extension is the moment where it may make more sense to just build a new home than renovate the existing from a cost perspective. Could uh, be. The, under the assumption that they intend to update everything in the exi- existing home with the extension. Yeah. So it's, it, to me, it often, I mean, there are, there's obviously exceptions and it depends, but if someone's buying, say, uh, call it a 2000 square foot home with the intent of updating it completely and yeah. adding a thousand square foot extension. My gut feel is that you may end up being at a higher cost and a more complicated process than just yeah. building yeah. It from new. hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. And there's, there's just, just a lot of unknowns. <laughs> um, you know, I've seen renovations on d- jobs done well, but there's always things that Homeowners are, oh, I should have done this or done that. They still don't have this, but you know, whatever. I, I got my extension. I got my extra bedroom or washroom. It works for them. Yeah. But like I said, some people aren't on a budget. They don't want to spend, you know, a million. They'd rather just spend 500, right? So, totally. Yeah. You know, there's other ways adding, you build a new house, add a rental suite, income helpers, right? Uh, US allows laneways now. Um, I want to get into that. That's one of my topics. Oh, too, yeah. right. but, I, I'm going to keep leading on to your questions here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it, it's hard to say. It, yeah. every, every, every scenario, every personal scenario, financially, every lot, every renovation is going to be different. It's a really open-ended question of it, uh, what you want to do. I, I think the best thing is, you know, if someone's looking into this, you know, get some rough plans drawn up, talk to a few contractors on the renovation job size, see, feel them out, see what's going to cost. Um, you know, if you're going to go the, a new new build, you know, talk to a few builders and see what the roughly square foot price is, um, you know, on a, show them a few houses, what that would cost and uh, figure what, what you want to do. I think that would be a good transition into costs, construction. <laughs> so just, I, I mean, I, I, I know a lot, I get the question often is how much does it cost to build a home? So yeah. let, you know, it, and that's, it depends. Yeah. You know, I, I spoke with a, a very high end builder that's doing architectural masterpieces yeah. in the West side of Vancouver and his cost per foot is 1700 plus. And so, 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 but um, to paint the picture here, let's talk about a, uh, and it it depends on the style of home, but like a step code three, two level, 3,000 square foot home, hardy siding, uh, AC, yeah, yeah, AC forced air. Um, What would be the, let's let's separate out the costs here because uh, let's talk about just the hard costs. The hard costs, uh, ignore, Interest, property taxes, uh, management fee. Yeah. Just the hard cost of all the trades and materials and labor going into a 3,000 square foot home. What would be the yeah. price per foot today as of March 10th, 2022? <laughs> I would quickly, not having a calculator in front yeah. of me, I think it'd be around like easy 200 bucks a square foot. The hard cost, easy 200. Yeah. And, and potential range, like, I mean, it could, anything can go up, but. So. Let's talk you about... You know, you asked me this question today. Is it, like, today, is, you've seen the supply and demand of material, rise of costs. So I'm going to give you another example. We're doing a house here. Uh, so we just started maybe eight months ago. And before we started, six months prior to that, I gave these homeowners a budget. Six months later, I, I got the permits, and things have changed now, right? I mean, you've seen the cost of material, uh, shortages... Um, and I warned them right away. I, I think we're we'll going to be over 15% on budget. And now we're about eight, nine months in the build. We're getting pretty close to the end. And we're literally almost, eight, I think, about 18% over budget. 18% from, from a our, budget that was set how long ago? Uh, I, I'd say 14 months ago. That's not bad from all the stuff we're hearing in the right. news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and this home was uh, step code five. Yeah. Um, they're getting a lot of rebates, which is good. Yeah. Uh, but still, like uh, as a builder, I I feel bad because it's hard yeah. to tell somebody, hey, we're gonna be spending, you know, 15, 20 percent more on your build. You know, luckily these guys have a home which they're gonna be selling, which they're gonna make more money yeah. On, yeah. On, 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 on that <laughs> end. So it kind of it yeah. kind of counterbalances itself, right? Um, but building costs have definitely gone up. 
Um, and people expect more out of a home these days. They they want the bells and whistles. They want home automation. They want sound systems. You know, they want air, air conditioning. You know, ten years ago, nobody was doing any of these things. Nobody's exterior insulation, triple pane, home automation, control four, music. Yeah. Nobody was doing it. So now, you know, you watch all these TV shows. People are checking out open houses, and, and a lot of these homes have all the bells and whistles. Right, if you're running Ethernet cable everywhere. They want Wi-Fi boosters. And there's a lot more education out there, so people expect a better product. So I think that's why a lot of home prices are getting higher. Cost of buildings getting higher. Uh, no one, no one ever calls me. Hey, Raj, I want to build a bare bones house. I, I haven't had that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they want everything. You know, even when you're sitting down with a client, working on a budget. Oh, I don't want AC. I don't want speakers. I don't want home automation. Like I'm doing one now. Oh, now we're adding AC. Now we're adding home automation. Um, we're adding onto the budget, right? Oh, totally. And and uh, you know, uh, call it a shower fixture it can be two hundred dollars <laughs> or two thousand. Right. You know, so it, it, the, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're getting yeah. these wall hung toilets. You're paying yeah. twelve hundred bucks for those. As opposed to a normal, you know, five hundred dollar toilet, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff on the market. Nice, but obviously nice usually costs you more money, right? <laughs> and talking about the cost for a moment, I know when I talk about hard costs, so $200 yeah. a foot, um, there's there's the holding, the carrying cost, the management on top. Yes. What would be, um, what is a typical, what, how do, what do you call it? General contractors, builders, yeah. there's a lot of different names for yes. construction managers. What, what, how do they typically charge? What's the, what's the range that you see out there? Uh so I guess there's two ways of how contractors charge. Some are, they do a cost plus. So for quick numbers, someone's uh, construction costs are a million bucks. Contractor might charge anywhere from eight to 15, 20%, right? Depending yeah. who you're hiring. Uh, I know it's a big range, but you know, he, depending where you're building, um, I don't know where your listeners are all from U S or other cities, but I'm sure we've got them all over. Yeah. Um, you know, if I take a same tra- a trade guy building a house in U.S., a framer, for example, taking from U.S. or taking Vancouver, he's in charge more in Vancouver. Right. So the build cost of Vancouver is higher. If we don't tell Vancouver people that, they get a little upset. Oh, they, they do. <laughs> they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And so, you know, with the cost of gas and stuff yeah, and totally. time and traveling, yeah. um, you know, and generally the products may be uh, more higher end, more expensive out there. So everyone just charges more. But generally speaking, New Westminster, uh, I think, uh, so I guess, sorry, let me go back to your question. I guess there's two ways. It's the cost plus method or is it like a flat management fee? Um, for myself, I just stick with the flat management fee, looking at the house or if there's a laneway or just a garage, size of the house. And now I've been looking at the step code. Like, like right. what, what are we trying to do here? That adds a little bit more. Uh, hands-on project management it involves me being there more often. It's not just slapping it up anymore. It's a lot more de- detailing. Um, so I stick to a management fee, um, but you know, I think wh- where you're going with your question, like what do people charge? I think for a good builder, you're probably at least going to pay at least sixty thousand for your house, anywhere up to one hundred twenty, uh, depending on the complexity. Like I said, the energy step code. Um, you know, if you're adding a laneway. Where the where the land is, right? The difficulty of the access to the project, so all the things could play a factor in there. That's sixty to one hundred twenty thousand. Call it again. We're New Westminster home builder focus yes. and three thousand square foot home. Uh, if it had a laneway and it was a high step code, it might be higher on that range. If it was very yes. basic, it might be lower on that range. Depends on the person. Yes, uh, I've been using like an all in figure uh, of you know when it comes to building. So say a 3,000 square foot home, carrying costs, taxes, uh, soft costs like mm-hmm. architects, engineers, arborist reports, all the yeah. consultants, hard costs. I've been using a figure of roughly $300 a foot. You just took the number right on my mouth. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so, I would 100% agree with you. So $300 a foot, $900,000 for a typical person to build a 3,000 square foot home. Um, and, and, you know, to me, that is, it's a lot of money, but it's very worthwhile when they're paying to me, one six for the land, you know, like yep. I find it, I find if you're going to pay one six for the land, you got to put, you should be putting more into the house because yeah. the land's so expensive. And, and that, I mean, if you have land, great, but if you're yeah. trying to find land these days, you know what it's like, right? Right. It's frustrating. <laughs> so, yeah. But I mean, it will be cheaper if you get your own land and build, 
right? And you get what you want. Um, obviously, when you're buying a finished product, the homeowner is using more. Uh, hence why you're paying a little bit more that way. Do you have a typical like rule of thumb? Uh, I mean, I know some people that build a home might have deep pockets and be yeah. financing it all in cash, but some people that are, say, more stretching themselves. Yes. Um, on how much money you need to build. And I know that's a yeah. big, broad, opening question. So let yeah. me kind of share with you what I've kind of, how I've thought of this. So there's two things that come to my mind is you need either on the low end, call it 40% equity of the total cost of the project, roughly, maybe 35 mm -hmm. if you're willing to take the risk, or you need to be able to afford half the land value and, and call it two to $300,000 to get up to lock up. Um, is what do you have, uh, if, if, if there's just like a basic regular professional, that's not in the business of building that wants yeah. to build their new home. Um, and they're seeing lands cost in one six and the house is going to cost them a million. Sure. What do you, what do you typically, and ignoring stress tests and mortgage yeah. stuff, do you have a rule of thumb on how much money you need to make that happen for a customer? Uh, so way I work, um, I usually ask the homeowner, like, what's your budget? Right. Like, like what, what can you afford to build on a new house? And I, I usually try to work it backwards for them. Um, meaning possibly of not building to the full size. Let's, you know, if you can build a 4,000 square foot house, let's tone it down to 3,000. Like if you can only afford that much money. Um, and also then the finishing details, right? We'll sit down with the client and go through every line item. You know, do you want the rating heat? What? Jeez, sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, you're making me cough all these numbers. Yeah, I, I inhaled my water. But, go ahead. Uh, but it's just talking details of, of the house. You know, you want crown molding, home automation, and just really trying to fine tweak the budget to make it work for the client. You know, when I build a house for one client, I forget the number that, oh, we only want to spend this much. And, and I think I finished five grand over their budget. So we really tone that house size wise. You know, eight foot eight foot floor ceilings everywhere. Uh, you know, we still did hardy. Still give them, we still give them good bones, but didn't have all the bells and whistles. But still a beautiful house uh, in the West End, and you know it hit their budget. They're happy. So I think you got to really work with the builder, talk to them. You know, figure out what they charge per square foot. Um, you know, you got to ask your client what they really want, what their wish list is, and start massaging that budget. And size-wise, potentially, right? Because when you're building stuff, everything goes by square footage. You know, if a framer comes in, oh, 4,000 square foot house, I'm going to charge you X amount per square foot. Mm. So if you go from 4,000 down to 3,000, you just save 25% off the labor bill, right? Right, right. Um, you know, there's, everything's by square foot. Flooring, drywall, piece count of how many washroom fixtures you're going to have in the house, right? Everything adds up. And if, if so, like on a simple level, if, someone wanted to, if someone bought a lot tomorrow yes, and um, they're trying to wrap their head around cost of putting up a 3,000 square foot home yep. with uh, just call it attached two car garage, for example, to keep yep. it simple. The, you know, my understanding is plan set aside a year for planning and a year for construction. Yep. Does that still translate today? Like a two years from ownership to finished home? Yeah, I think it's yeah. You, really fair. you could do it. I, knowing you, and I've seen yeah. your projects, I know that if it were your home, yeah. it'd probably be up and ready in a year. Yeah. But, but yeah. that typical person takes time to plan and do the designs yeah. and then the permit process. Your design usually takes a good two to three months because you're going back and forth, changing stuff. Um, and now you got the added step of hiring an energy advisor to model your house. So that takes a little bit of time. You got to get your structural engineering done, submit the permits. So now you're at four months. Then it's going to sit at the city, you know, three to six months, depending how well those plans are done. And yeah. there's mistakes, problems going back and forth. So you're almost into a year right there. And then usually it'll be another year to build your home. The, and now with infill being prominent, um, the cost of an infill, uh, and I know yeah. that's broad, but let's use like a, a pretty typical range. Okay. If I had a 3,000 square foot home and it exists, let's, well, let's use the difference of, if you're building a home anyway, if you're doing yeah. new construction, you're in uh, the cost of a detached two-car garage yes. versus the cost of an infill. What would be the approximate difference there? Because oftentimes you can do either or. So uh, uh, with a new construction, single-family home yeah. with a garage, 
or a laneway. Yeah, a laneway. So I would probably say it'd be an added 150, 200 grand to do the infill over yes. the two, two yeah. garage. Yeah. And uh, so I, I've put like $50,000 as a rough two car garage, bare bones sort of cost of getting it up while you're in construction. Is that? Uh, if you're building a new house with it, yes. yes with, but uh, not from scratch. On yeah, well, the thing is, uh, when you have an old house yeah. and someone wants a laneway, our city bylaws here in US, you have to, if you're building a laneway, you have to upgrade your services. Yes. Yeah. So you have to upgrade the water line, sewer line, and you have to go underground electric. So by paying all those city fees um, and then paying for all the work to get those services to from possibly mm -hmm. front to back, you're a hundred thousand right there. That's a huge cost. Hundred thousand in city, like so. And, uh, no, oh, sorry. so that's actually city city fees, fees and actually cost of doing it and the cost of actually yeah. you know if you got a four foot setbacks inside your house, you got to take that water line, sewer line electrical line all to the back right so now you're trenching you know on the side of a four foot house and bringing a little service to that laneway i usually say that's 100 grand right there we haven't even broken ground yet well we've broken yeah. ground to get the service there but we haven't actually physically started the laneway right so so on, on an old house with a laneway you know expect to pay more for that laneway uh, that was actually the snare i was going to ask you is, yeah so on an old house uh we, you're talking about upgrade, like, and just to, on that note, the sorry, the the city fees and the cost of doing work use that as a hundred thousand dollars as a rough ballpark. Uh, the city fees, uh, well, services, uh, the city. services, city services can range. Yeah. Um, you know, some areas they got combined sewer uh, and storm. Some are separated. Right. Some are across the street. Some are on a busy street. So they'll charge you anywhere from fifteen to twenty five grand for the sewer part. Right. And then anywhere from uh, 10 to 15 grand for the water, depending where it is on the street, if it's on your side of Boulevard or across the street, uh, obviously more trenching, more work for them. Um, and then also you have to convert your house from overhead to underground electric. Yeah. Um, they're so trying to get rid of the overhead <laughs> wires. And you know the city fees for that is roughly around 9,000. Mm. Then you also have to work with Shaw or Telus and possibly pay them up to another 10 to 15 grand, depending where the street pole is to get access to the house. And also <laughs> another factor there, uh, they do their bylaw also stays like if it's if your water line is uh, 30 or 40 years new or newer, then you don't have to do it. Right. Okay. So but there is so if it's really old, the city's just trying to make upgrade the services of your house, right? So it's, it's not a bad thing. Um so if it's old, I think 30 or 40 years, then you have to upgrade it. But if it's not, um you can just use it. So there's obviously huge savings there but then you're still you know if those services are on your front of your property and you're trying to take them to all the way to the back so there's some you know excavation trenching work to be the, done there to we we had a building permit uh, on a reno that denny and i did on second in queens park yep. at four or five there and and uh we had to update our services and i think like between four or five in the back yeah, lot yeah. because there's two lots there it was like $76,000, the yeah. total. And that's ignoring the cost of actually doing the work. But that was two services, right? There's two services, yeah. but it was, yeah, it was expensive. It, yes. was, it was just more expensive than I anticipated. And I think you had to cross that major street, correct me if we I'm did. wrong. Yeah, so I, 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 I think that's yeah. why no. that one was a little higher. Like, that's why I said you got to see where your services are on the main street. Like, and then that's a huge boulevard. You got to... Mm. I think you went. I think you went right across the second there on the other side. Correct me. If yeah, it was right across. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you went all the way across yeah. to almost to the meat store type of side. And came <laughs> all across. Like, okay, that, hence why the cost was there. And okay, so if you have an old home, and often in times, if it's a new Westminster, you're yeah. going to trigger that need to upgrade a service because a lot of the homes that have the potential to add a laneway are over yeah. 50 years old. Yes. Um, not every time, but. Uh, if you have an old home and you want to add a laneway to it, um, I'm hearing approximately three hundred fifty thousand dollars, maybe even more. Hang on. Um, I, so we we did one a few years ago. It was with an old house, and we did a laneway. It's probably one of the nicest thing we did. Uh, you know, heated floors, AC, two washroom, two bedrooms. Uh, I think we we're close for three fifty back then. So that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. So. I would say anything. It'd probably be on the plus side of three hundred and fifty these days, right? So let's call it four hundred thousand yeah. dollars if you're adding yeah. on the 
And it, it depends on the design of the laneway. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the design, depends right? Depends on trees. I, it depends on what you're tearing down it, to make it, it happen. If it's a one, if it's yeah. a one level laneway, right. or if it's a two level, you know, hand frame trusses, or you know, or manufactured trusses, where the connections are, you know, it, yeah, it, it's really hard to say. That's why I have a tough time quoting people until I see the plans, talk to the city engineering. You know, what are the services going to cost? Physically going to the property, checking it out, see accessibility, right? Can you get a machine in there or is this going to be done by hand? And in, in the cost of doing it when you have new construction starts. So if we're, if we're yeah. saying 400000 if you don't have a new, if you're not doing a new building that's on yeah. existing, the cost of new might be two fifty. Two fifty dollars 300000 because yeah. so you you, the machine's yeah. already there. Uh, the services are being absorbed into the house costs already, right? So you're splitting the cost of the sewers yeah. and stuff, right? Um, and the other, you know, potential is like where your sewer is, like, are you pumping, you know? Right. Yeah. So you got to really factor in all these little things that can add up. Right. Well, I would say it makes sense to do a laneway if you do a new construction as like a realtor, but there aren't really many examples of that in, yeah. in most cases. Yeah. And, and the cool yeah. thing is maybe yeah. in the future, you can stratify them and start selling right. those off, um, you know, just so you have affordability, uh, make some money or have your grandkids or your parents move in. They're trying to do that today with some HRAs, uh, heritage yes. revitalization agreements. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's really good that City New West is really on the heritage um, and allowing you to do these neat projects, right? Um, bigger laneways or uh, save the house and we'll give you a bit more square footage certain areas you you mentioned earlier about trees coming into the equation and just as a personal kind of experience yeah. i had a i'm doing an i'm in the process of, a, of an hra heritage revitalization yep. agreement and in the arborist report there was 44 trees that affect the lot and the total deposits was sixty five thousand yeah. dollars if they didn't change it um which i think they might but uh it's trees can be a costly thing they can also impact your ability to do what you want they I'm might sure. say you you got to move your house to the right side a lot because we want to save this tree or you got to move your garage to the a certain side to avoid a tree so or that 65 grand might you might be able to finish your project off because you might need that money right yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's a big chunk yeah. of change yeah. uh, I've, see, I've seen some higher deposits um you know that that's something you got to work with with the arborist um you know there's some trees you know by paper it has to be protected but there's some trees that won't even come close to the project, right? Um, totally. Yeah. It's a tough pill to swallow. Um, it's not like you're going to get paid any interest on that money. It just sits no, there. It, it hurts. Unfortunately, <laughs> it hurts. Uh, but obviously, the city um, wants to protect those trees and wants you to protect them. Um, but, I mean, I, I made this pitch to the city. I go, there's got to be a cap somewhere. This is. I don't think a builder's going to come in there and chop every tree down. You know, mm -hmm. the worst case scenario, maybe one gets damaged. But there should be a cap, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like some fun. lots are more affected than others. Um, I, I know I'm taking up a lot of your time, so I want to kind of get down to the last questions that I that in heritage revitalization agreements. Yeah. The cost to restore these old homes. You did a project in Manitoba and Queens Park that involved bringing in houses, putting lifting them, putting on a new foundation. I know you did that uh, in Glenbrook North as well. I think um, the the cost versus the reward. So, you know, an example, it, uh, here's, a, here's a straightforward one. Say you had an RS1 zone lot in New Westminster that you could do a 3,000 square foot home on on a 6,000 square foot lot. And you're teased with the opportunity of doing uh, an HRA to get from a 0.5 FSR to say a 0.7. Uh, so instead of 3,000 square foot structure, you can do what's 0 0.7, 4,200 square feet. Is the cost of doing an HRA is significantly higher. And to me, it often makes sense to, you know, with some exceptions, to go through that rezoning public hearing uh, process, the extra time and, and heritage consultants and all the committees that have their two cents. Um, to me, getting going from a 0.5 to 0.7, that extra 1,200 buildable feet, to me, it only makes sense if you get more density. Uh, like an extra unit or getting a duplex or an extra door. Um, and that's what you did on Manitoba where they put two homes on the backyard of a really large lot. Uh, what is your opinion on HRAs in terms of like buyers looking to maximize the potential of their home or buyers looking at a home that doesn't suit them and thinking, oh, I'll just do an HRA and I'll get a bigger home. 
I, I think the great thing, it's a win for everybody. I think it's a win for the city, the community, uh, win for the homeowner. Uh, you know, you get to restore the home, keep it, the city's happy. Uh, it's another saved house, you know, and potentially renovated and protected now. On the other end, for the homeowner, you know, if he's going to subdivide his property off and get a, a bigger house on the other end and be able to sell it or move into it and sell the heritage or vice versa, you know, you, there's good potential gains there financially, right? So to me, it's a no-brainer if you're going to get more density out of it. I, I think it's a win-win for everybody. I um, think to be, you know, uh, density uh, often is a no-brainer. I guess yeah. the, the most common thing that I would think of from a listener's perspective might be just a single family dwelling. Like, right. you know, they, they buy an old home yes. and they want to make it bigger and on new foundation. Right. So they got to lift it and put it on new foundation. Right. So ignore the density part of this okay. question. Let's talk about just, just, converting just someone it that's one to one. Yeah. Yeah. One to one. Uh, I guess it all depends if you need the more square footage, right? Right. And yeah. <laughs> end of the day. And if you want to uh, be in that particular if neighborhood. You want, if you like, if, <laughs> I mean, if you, yeah. if you love the house, you want to be in that neighbor, neighborhood, you want, you like the area and you need a bigger house. Why not? If, in my opinion, if a new construction three thousand square foot um, uh, build is three hundred a foot, yeah, a three thousand square foot HRA, yeah, that involves rejigging the windows, the siding, yeah. the foundation, yeah. and you know, just think of the typical. Yeah. What, what would that be at a foot? I know that's a tough one. Yeah, would you be adding a hundred a foot or more? I I, I think twenty five percent. of three hundred bucks a square foot plus, right? So, um, so this is a, you know, upwards of 375, 400 for sure, depending what you have to do. Uh, like the one I did in Glenbrook here, you know, when we started gutting it, just sitting on cinder blocks and just falling apart. Yeah. So now I'm lifting up the house and digging underneath, tunneling underneath, pulling all that out and adding a new foundation, drain tile. It's harder. That like it's, it's significant. It is harder. Yeah. You just don't, like I said earlier, you just don't know what you're getting into. Um, but I think, you know, if you're in that position, be prepared to spend yeah. extra money. I, I think I always tell people, like, if you're going to do a rental, just, hey, just watch out. You're, you're going to go over budget. I don't care what anybody says. Right. And this is like, you know, I see this often in Vancouver proper. Yeah. Like, if you're in kits and you're trying to make the most of your home, yeah. I totally get it. In Queens Park, if you want to be specific in that neighborhood, you kind of have to do it. Yeah. If you're choosing to voluntarily do it in another neighborhood, that's yeah. where it becomes a little bit of a tougher yeah. question. I think it all comes down to space yeah. and, and, and your financing, right? If you need the space and you have the money. Why not? I, I, great to take advantage of what the city has. There, uh, you know, more space and stuff. Cool. Well, I, I've taken a lot of your time. I think <laughs> I, I, I think we've covered a lot today. Yeah. I think the the one thing that I would just want to close with, if, yes. if you know, I know you as a home custom home builder in New West. I've seen you do HRAs, her, like significant projects. Yes. Yeah. Um, Anyone listening, if they're you know, obviously if they're in New West and thinking of a custom home, no brainer. But are there yeah. projects? Uh, whether it's rezoning, higher density, higher energy efficient types, are there certain, is there a message or, or certain project that you're looking to do more of in the future? Um, project type? What well, I think it'd be cool to see what Vancouver's doing. Um, like every, almost every lot in Vancouver is duplexes. Yeah. Um, I think going back to density, I think that's kind of really important to see, you know, everyone's talking, oh, you need more density, more density. And, I find cities are making it difficult in terms of like you got to rezone, you got to subdivide. It's it's a it's a lengthy process. It takes I've done it three times. It takes up to two years. You know, if you look at Vancouver now, who's kind of like the leader of energy efficiency, homes, and density. You know, there every lot in Vancouver now is a duplex. You know, so you're adding two fifteen hundred square foot roughly homes. Uh, they recently announced they're going to start looking at six plexes standard lot. Uh, lot I have no idea how they're gonna do yeah. it or what they're planning uh, like a double laneway in the back and four units inside I have no idea but I think that's the right direction I mean obviously clearly population is growing the demand is high uh, prices are high for that reason uh, there's not a lot of product um, probably know more than that oh, it's than expensive. I do <laughs> <laughs> but I mean there's not enough product out there um, so I think cities got to be more creative on um, start densifying. I think that's why I want to see more. Um, and there's, you know, got kids. I got two young girls. You know, I got to figure out 
you know, I don't want them to move far away from me. I want to stay, stay lower mainland near me. I think there's great opportunities like laneways or, you know, maybe if you have an old house, build a duplex, they can live in the back, you live in the front or give one kid to each or something. Mm. So I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of potential coming up. And, and I think a lot of cities are starting to change mm. their old ways and start looking at uh, more density homes. And it feels like we finally know how to build a proper home. So yeah. we, we uh, yeah. <laughs> like, not that we didn't before, but they've, they've yeah. dialed it. They've yeah, dialed I mean, it in. 20 yeah. years from now, we'll probably say, oh, there's a better way now, right? <laughs> yeah, Let's maybe. be honest. It's, yeah. it's never going to yeah. end. There's changing products, Fair better enough. products, uh, yeah. better material. You know, we're probably going to see solar shingles and solar hardy siding, yeah. maybe, right? Who knows how hard we add some solar grid to your windows. And, totally. But, so I think technology is going to change for the better. Um, You're going to see houses angled towards the sun, not the front of the street. <laughs> yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, maybe you'll see houses rotate towards the yeah. sun. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to take up any more time. Uh, yeah. Again, how can people reach out to you if they are yeah. interested in taking on a project like this? Vers yeah. Raj I mean, Gill, Versa Development. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah we're busy. Uh, we have a lot of projects already booked for this year, next year. Uh, I think I like four laneways coming up. Oh, wow. um, we have three two or three new builds coming. Um, you know, you just don't know when they're coming and we're busy. Um, so don't reach out to Raj. He's too busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're blessed that way. We're busy right now. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you're planning the future, uh, you know, just reach out, uh, see what our timeline is. Um, go from there. Yeah, and feel free to connect with us as well. You know, yeah. like uh, we're in the same area yeah. and, and uh, I can ask Raj for you if he's busy yeah. enough or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, I, yeah. yeah. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was kind of fun. Uh, Thank you. I, I watch your shows, so it's neat. Amazing, man. Thanks for, for being here. I think, uh, I hope uh, people got a lot of value. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. That's it.